So how were physically disabled citizens discriminated against? And what is the ADA and why did it change everything? In the past, many citizens with physical disabilities were discriminated against in facilities, employment, and public places. The Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA as I will refer to it from here on out, is a piece of legislation that signed into law in 1990 by George H.W. Bush that really changed everything. Much like the Civil Rights Act of 1964, it prevented discrimination based on disability. In addition, it required employers to provide reasonable accommodations to employees with disabilities, and it imposed accessibility requirements on public accommodations. So if the ADA exists, how are the physically disabled still marginalized? And there are a few ways. The first is employment. Many companies don't hire physically disabled people, even if it's against the ADA to discriminate. A flaw in the ADA is also exposed here. The accommodations the ADA requires makes it more expensive to hire physically disabled people, so a lot of companies try and avoid hiring physically impaired citizens without anyone noticing. Not only is this in violation of the ADA, but also Article 23 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. A second, extremely concerning marginalization of the physically disabled involves voting. There are multiple issues with the current system that prevent citizens with physical disabilities from voting. The first is relatively straightforward. Many citizens cannot enter the polling place because there is no ramp for their wheelchair or mobility aid. Again, this is an obvious violation of the ADA, as public facilities must be accessible by the physically disabled, yet some polling locations are not. There are other issues related to physical disabilities and voting, like little amounts of space, difficulty reading, and a number of other things. However, I learned a lot more about it in my interview, and why it was a little bit more different than I thought. I want to talk about it and what I learned as a whole from it. When I was talking with Nick, he kept coming back to confidence and that that was one of the big issues for disabled people, that they often lack the confidence to live more independently, to ride the bus, to do what they want to do. Not that they were really discriminated against, obviously that's present too, but that their lifestyle lacked a lot of self-confidence. And that changed my perspective. I realized there was a lot more nuance involved, that maybe these stats do more harm than good. We talked about voting too, and that there were a lot of barriers for anyone to vote. And it came back to confidence again, and knowledge, that they don't know there are other ways to vote, or they don't have the confidence to go and find out. And the same seems like it applies to employment as well. Again, there may be barriers, but it's really a matter of confidence in getting out there. And through the whole interview, Nick kept coming back to confidence. And that's what it really seems like they do at the Metropolitan Center for Independent Living. They give disabled people confidence and the tools to live independently, to do what they really want to do. It was a very enlightening experience, and it changed how I thought about it all. It taught me more than I could ever learn online. My name is Nicholas Wilkie. Uh, welcome to the Center for Independent Living. I have worked here for uh, the last 12 years. Uh, I've worked um, for the last 12 years, I've worked in the core services department, where we provide um, we provide independent living services. Um, that's everything from um, from individual classes uh, that the community can take to one-to-one um, -one goal setting. Uh, we do a lot of advocacy work. We provide information and referral. So if we don't offer the service that someone is looking for, we help them find. The service that they're looking for. Um, a hundred percent of everything we do um, is free to the consumer and community. Um, centers for Independent Living were started um, so that um, we could assist in removing barriers for people with disabilities and um, people with disabilities could then move forward and make the choices that they needed to make uh, or that they want to make with regard to what they want to do, where they want to live, who they want to have in their lives, um, whether or not they want to get married, 
whether or not they want to own their own home. Um, you know, and it basically all starts with what do you want to do? And it's our charge as a Center for Independent Living to assist people in figuring out how to do whatever it is they want to do. What do you think are the most pressing concerns in the physically disabled, specifically physically disabled community, mm -hmm. or some of the big things you guys here at yeah. um, MCIL are working on? Um, so I think I think one of the um, one of the biggest things um, f that we always try to address um, for people with disabilities um, is um, you know what it is that they would they would like to do. Um, and for some people, just simply answering that question can be tough because there might be a lot that they would like to do, yeah. but they, they might be coming from a situation where um, they've never done some of those things that they would want to do. Like um, learning how to get around the city, um, learning um, what it might be like to live in their own apartment. Uh, learning about um, accommodations, uh, raising their level of expectations for themselves uh, because of some of the situations out there occur. Uh, if someone doesn't have the expectations within themselves to say, this is what I want to do, uh, they might have been in a situation where um, everything is uh, everything up to this point has been has been done for them in you know the best the best of approaches possible like coming from a very caring compassionate place like parents and supports but if that individual has, has never kind of flexed their own independence and they don't have an expectation of seeing themselves as doing that having everyone around you kind of make decisions for you can almost be, it almost creates more dependence because if everybody else is making decisions for you, do you know what independence is? Every situation, we have the power as individuals to make choices for ourselves. Um, simply by saying yes or no, you know, do, would you like to eat today? Usually the answer would be yes. Okay. Would you like something to drink today? Typically the answer would be yes. But, um, if you've never had the opportunity to make simple choices or have the expectation that you will make them, I feel like, um, I feel like there's some people with disabilities out there that haven't had those experiences because they've never had to make those decisions. So how do we encourage people with disabilities to build confidence, set goals for themselves, but also how do we address conversations with those passionate supports that say, okay, we know that all this comes from a good place. But how do we get those people to maybe step back a little bit so that um, so that the individuals have an opportunity to decide what it is that they would like to do? So that's if I did give you one thing that's like the most important part about about our work, um, that's the biggest part of Pro is how do you get how do you get people with disabilities to express and take some action in confident ways for themselves? If you want to help physically disabled citizens do what they would love to do, I highly suggest donating to a Center for Independent Living or a charity. I personally chose to donate to Special Effect, a charity that helps young disabled children play video games.